Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally here. We live in exciting times. It almost seems like every day there's a new major technological breakthrough that is an absolute game changer. For example, today in 2018, I can have a Big Mac delivered straight to my door. Pretty soon I'm gonna be hopping in a car with no driver in it. Pretty soon a car with no driver in it's gonna be delivering my Big Mac to my door. We've even sent Ryan Gosling to the moon. Do you question whether- But all of those technological feats pale in comparison into what I'm gonna show you in this video. This isn't clickbait, this isn't fake, this is real, people. You see this right here? This is my iPhone 10. Not only is it the most bougie smartphone device on the market, not only can I waste countless hours on Instagram and YouTube, but now, as a worship leader, I can stream my in-ear monitor mix over Wi-Fi directly to my iPhone and plug my headphones in and listen to my voice, my click, my guitar, my tracks, and the rest of my band in worship. This is a game changer, and you're gonna learn all about it in this video, coming up. What's going on? My name is Jake Goslin. I'm the creator of churchfront.com, an online resource helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. And this video is more about the tech-savvy part than the gospel-centered part. But make sure you subscribe to the channel to get your full dose of all the videos that I have to help you become a better worship leader. And I want to invite you to check out Worship Leader School. It is what it sounds like. It's an online school for worship leaders containing a course library, an online community to find support from other worship leaders, including myself, as well as just connect with others so you don't feel isolated. And we do weekly office hours with myself so you can log on to Zoom and chat with me in real time and we can talk about your worship ministry. So go to worshipleaderschool.com to join today. I know how much you guys love in-ear monitor videos. Every time I post something about in-ear monitors, the YouTube stats, they just they just go the skyrocket up and to the right. Well, I don't know if this is your right or my they, they, they go up, a lot, lot, lot of views, a lot of watch time. And I understand, I know how important in-ear monitoring is, right? This is something that we use, especially if you have kind of the ecosystem set up your, at your church for in-ear monitors, it, it's how we hear ourselves. And it can either be really, really good, we can hear ourselves well, we can hear a band well, maybe even hear the congregation well with some congregation mics, um, or it just sounds like poo. And I also wanna say there are multiple ways to set up in-ear monitors at your church, and there's multiple ways that are cost a lot less than the setup that I'm gonna about to show you, you can check out some of those videos. I'm gonna link a card on the video here for you to you know, watch through all of my in-ear monitor videos if that is entertaining for you. And it can be overwhelming because there are multiple ways to build an in-ear monitor system for churches. And I've covered a lot of different ways. You can use the headphone amp, the HA8000 from Behringer. I like that a lot. A lot of other people seem to like it too. You can also use just kind of the individual headphone amps. Again, Behringer makes some great ones. Uh, you can have a digital personal mixers. You can have the traditional wireless in-ear monitoring. And those were kind of the main options that you always had for in-ear monitors for church worship bands and, and other bands too, if you're watching this and you're not part of a worship band. But this video applies to worship bands because that's what I do. That's what my channel's about. And in the past, those were the most common methods to run in-ear monitoring for your band. But but today, I'm going to show you this setup where you are going to be streaming from your sound console to your smartphones over Wi-Fi. One little side note too, a lot of people get kind of a bad attitude when things are only developed for Mac, and it's not because the developers like have something against Windows and Android, it's just very difficult for them to develop for Windows and Android because they're just not as consistent platforms as iOS and Mac are, right? Everybody hates Apple because it's so restrictive on its operating systems and in the way you, though they work. And I'm not a so software developer, so I don't really understand all of that, but you know, the ease of use of Apple is that everything's simple, it's very clean and easy to use. And that makes it easy for software developers to create an app for an iPhone and they only have to make one version of it. Whereas in the Android world and in the PC world, you have a lot of different hardware devices running these operating system so that's why it's more difficult at least that's how someone explained it to me uh, and why they have not developed Android apps for these things so first I want to talk about the gear that makes this possible and I don't want to call this an inexpensive setup it's it's honestly not cheap it's really innovative 
and it's affordable. I think it's affordable. I mean, again, affordable is a, a subjective word. When I say affordable anytime on this channel, I mean you're not spending thousands upon thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. For some of you, if it's over $5, that means it's not affordable, but that's not how I take it. I take affordable to be in the couple hundred dollars range to maybe like a thousand to $2,000 range. That's realistically affordable in at least my context of where I'm at. All this gear I'm gonna cover here, I'm gonna put links in the description of this video so you can go pick this stuff up on Amazon if you don't have it. So here are all the pieces of gear you will need to make this setup possible. Number one, you are going to need a sound console. I highly recommend a digital sound console. And on top of that, I recommend sound consoles by Midas or Behringer. I've made lots of videos about it, but Yamaha, PreSonus, they make great ones too. You'll want a digital sound console because a lot of these new digital sound, I said sound console a lot. You're gonna want a digital sound console because a lot of these new mixers come with great digital sound cards built into them. So you're able to send them, you know, multiple channels of audio, but then they can also send out multiple channels of audio via USB. So a digital sound console like this Midas M32R that I have right here. This is what we use at our church plant every Sunday. The next piece of hardware you're gonna need in this setup is a Mac computer. At our church, we use a 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's the 2016 version. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, I think 256 gigabyte hard drive, and then the quad core processor. And we need it to be a relatively beefy machine because it runs ProPresenter and lighting, and we just want it to be a solid computer so that it never fails in the middle of a service running all of our media. And I'm gonna try, and I think it's gonna be possible, it should work just fine. I don't think we're sucking up too much CPU power. I'm gonna be running the Soundcaster software on this MacBook Pro as well. Many of you probably already have a computer in your tech booth. Hopefully it has some beefier specs, um, and that'll do for this in-ear monitor setup. So long, again, uh, as it is a Mac. The next major piece of hardware that you need in this setup is a very powerful Wi-Fi router. I was kind of surprised by this. I didn't know there's that much of a major difference in the different types of Wi-Fi routers out there. So I went to Best Buy yesterday and I got the Linksys AC5400 tri-band router. This thing, it looks like a little spaceship or a robot. It looks like Wally -E or something like that. It's just, this thing should be able to beam Wi-Fi to the moon. It's so powerful and expensive. I think it was like $330, which I didn't know you had to ever spend that much money on a Wi-Fi router, but you need to because you need really, really good bandwidth for it to be able to send up to 16 channels of audio over Wi-Fi, which is just mind blowing when you think about it. And I did try this with a cheaper Wi-Fi router. I have this little Netgear Wi-Fi router, it's like 50 bucks, uh, but the bandwidth is way too low. Um, and when I was streaming the in-ear mix, it was just not working out. It just had a lot of dropouts and pops and stuff like that. So this Wi-Fi router is what you need to really make sure you have a, a really great experience with this setup. Then the final piece of gear that you're gonna need, and this is kind of the, the, the neat part about this, and there's some pros and cons to it, but the final thing you're gonna need uh, is your iOS device. So you got your iPhone, and each person who needs in-ear monitoring in your band is going to need an iPhone to be able to stream the mix to their ears. So the upside and the pros of this setup is that Probably a lot of people in your band have iPhones already, um, so it's great. They get to utilize this super powerful little computer we carry around in our pockets for their in-ear monitor mix. The downside is that there's a good chance that a lot of the folks in your band have Android devices, and again, this system currently does not work on Android, so that's a pretty big con um, if that's the case for you. It's also worth noting that if you have an iPad, you can use their Director app, which allows your audio engineer to control mix and stuff from an iPad. So it's, it's like having your audio engineer on stage or something like that, but they can hear everybody's mix and kind of be their monitor engineer for them. I'm not really gonna cover that app in this video, but it is cool. If you have an iPad, that can integrate into the system as well. Lastly, when it comes to the gear you're gonna wanna get, there's the little things. So I had to get a lightning to headphone adapter for my phone. So I have my all clear in-ears plugged into my phone, but Apple doesn't like headphone jacks, and it's kind of the direction everyone's going these days. 
be really concerned if they just get rid of the lightning connector altogether. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And then the other piece of little gear that I had to get is the USB-C to Ethernet because I'm going from my laptop over Ethernet to the Wi-Fi router so we have a strong, solid, stable connection to broadcast the in-ear monitor mix. That's all the gear you need for this setup. Now let's talk about the software you're gonna need. So on your Mac, go to the Mac App Store and download the Soundcaster app. They allow you to download the app for free and run it in gear test mode. Next, you're gonna wanna go to the App Store on your iPhone and then search for the Performer app. So you're gonna wanna get Audio Fusion Performer. I already have it installed. So this is free for your musicians to go ahead and download from the App Store. And now let's talk about pricing and how this all works. In the end, you're paying $100 per musician. Once you have the Soundcaster app opened up on your laptop, go to the preferences section or just click Soundcaster and then go to upgrade Soundcaster. And here is where you can select how many people you are gonna have in your band who are, who are gonna use this setup for their in-ear. So what I went ahead and did is I already purchased one license for one performer because I'm gonna test this out with just myself uh, in one of the upcoming Sundays at my church. And as we wanna add more people, I just move the slider up and you'll see it's just gonna increase uh, $100 each time. So that's how the pricing works. The real quick way to think about it is if you have four people in your band, it's gonna cost $400 worth of software. If it's gonna be 10 people, it's gonna be $1,000 worth of software. And assuming your band members have their hardware devices, comparatively speaking to your traditional in-ear monitors, wireless in-ear monitors, it's a pretty good price because it costs $1,000 just for a good, reliable, traditional wireless in-ear monitor system. In using this audio fusion system, you can have up to 16 unique performers. So you can have 16 different mixes streamed to iPhones. So that's the software and pricing, and it only takes a couple seconds to download these things from the App Store. The first thing you need to do is get audio from your sound console to your computer running the Soundcaster app. The Midas M32R makes it really easy because you have the USB out on the back, which you can send 32 channels out of the sound console into a computer. So it's basically functioning as a 32 channel audio interface. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I don't have a live band set up that I can test this out and show you what's going on. So I'm just gonna play back a multi-track recording of our worship band that I have here in Logic Pro. So in Logic Pro, I have it routed so that all these outputs in here are mapped to the individual channels on my sound console. In most cases, you won't have to do this unless if you want to set it up at home like me and test it out and get it all configured before you actually bring it to church. My church is a set up teardown church. That's why I can't do it there. So when I play the session in Logic Pro, you see all the audio files playing here and then you're gonna see all the little meters on my board lighting up because it's being fed with audio like it would be in a live situation. So whether you have a live band or you're playing back a multi-track recording, the next step is to actually get the audio back to the computer into the Soundcaster app. So on my Midas M32R, and you can do this on the X32, what I did is I went to the routing section, and then I'm gonna use the P16 out section to route these channels back to the Soundcaster app on my laptop. And what's nice about this ecosystem with the Midas and Behringer board is that they have their P16 digital monitor mixers that you can use, but you can use this same little routing configuration for your um, monitors using the Soundcaster app. And the thing about the Soundcaster app is it can only broadcast up to 16 individual channels to 16 people. So 16 is a magic number. That should be plenty of channels. So I grouped all the drums together into one mix bus so it only takes up one channel on the Soundcaster app. So when I scroll through here, you'll see I got the vocals, click, uh, Ableton left, Ableton right, our Ableton bass tracks, drums, acoustic, keys, left, keys, right, our host and our pastor's mic. And I have these routed in such a way that some of these are just direct outs from the channels. Um, but then again, like I said, with the drums, I created a mix bus and then I signed that mix bus out to one of these P16 outputs here. And then that's gonna send the audio back to the Soundcaster app. Clear as mud. Now the audio is being sent out of the digital console back through that same USB cable. Technology is just so amazing. You have channels going this way and that way, and it just all works 
wonderfully. Now I'm gonna go back to my laptop that runs Soundcaster, and it's important if you make any routing changes on your digital console, um, or you plug it in or out, make sure you restart the Soundcaster app so it detects everything properly. Like, because I went to the app and I was like, why is it not picking up the signal? And I just restarted it and it worked fine. So make sure you restart it if it's not working properly. But it's really easy, you open the app and then you go to input devices and then you select your uh, sound console and looks like I just finished the recording, so I gotta go back through in the multi-track session, just put, bring my playhead back here. And now what's happening is this audio here is playing from Logic, it goes to my mixer, and then it's going out of the mixer back into Soundcaster. What's also cool about this setup is you can do input monitoring on Soundcaster. Right now you don't hear any music, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn on input monitoring. This audio you're hearing right now is the audio that's going into the Soundcaster app. So it's great, as a sound engineer, you can set it up, make sure it's, it's sounding right. Um, and all you do is go through and label the channels the way you want them, and that's it. And you wanna disable uh, or enable the channels that you're using too, so disable the ones that you're not using so you're not wasting any uh, processing power. Um, but getting it set up is really, really simple. Now that we have the audio going into our Soundcaster app on our computer, we need to broadcast that audio over Wi-Fi. And this is kind of the, the trickier part. Um, I wish this was a little bit more uh, less expensive and a little bit easier to do, but in the end, it's, it's really not that bad. So um, I already mentioned you need a powerful Wi-Fi router. I'm gonna link uh, the recommendations that Audio Fusions Systems has for you. Again, expect to pay at least $300 for a good Wi-Fi router. But when it comes to configuring this on your computer, uh, here are the important things you need to do. You need to connect your computer to the Wi-Fi router via Ethernet. So to do that, go to your network preferences, and then you're going to actually want to turn off Wi-Fi on your computer. And you just want to have this computer um, connected to this router for your audio fusion system um, via Ethernet right here. And then you may need to go into advanced and hit renew DHCP lease. Um, just press OK. So make sure this is green and that means it's connected and ready to go. And there are some more important settings that you wanna have configured properly within your router's settings. This is where things get a little bit technical and geeky. This is where I probably personally need a little bit more help on, but I followed all the instructions very carefully that they have on their website about how to optimize your Wi-Fi router for this setup. So disable Wi-Fi on a computer running Soundcaster, select a five gigahertz, Wi-Fi channel that no one else is using. All right, I did that. And then configure the Wi-Fi channels for 40 megahertz, so that's important. I actually found a, there's a drastic improvement when I did that. So this Linksys router here has some advanced settings that you can alter. So what I did is I went ahead and I created my network called Soundcaster on the five gigahertz band, and then I just set a password monitors for it, so. Um, if you ever visit my church, don't come hacking our monitors and messing with it with that password. Um, and then here you have um, the channel selection and then the channel width. These are important things. So uh, the channel width, they say 40 megahertz. And as far as channel selection, you can easily figure out which channel is the best by going to your wireless diagnostics app on your uh, Mac computer and then go to window, go to scan. And then it's gonna do this quick little scan for you and tell you, okay, the best five gigahertz channel is 161. So I'll go ahead and make sure you know that this is set to uh, 161, uh, looks like I have that option right there. And then I'll press apply, and it'll make sure that the Wi-Fi router has all the right settings. And I wanna note again, it's really easy to get this up and running even with a cheap wireless router, but if you do not have that streaming bandwidth for it to send 16 channels of audio, across the air. I mean, it's probably get radiation poisoning from it. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, your Wi-Fi router needs to be able to stream hundreds of megabytes worth of audio over the air. I don't even know, I don't know what you call that, but that's, that's why you need this expensive router. So I have my Wi-Fi router set up, optimized for the right channels, all the right settings according to the Audio Fusion Systems website. 
Now I need to go to my iPhone here and make sure that I am on the right Wi-Fi. Gotta go down to Soundcaster right there. It's connected. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my performer app and then let's play some music. And there you go, we'll put this screen on the video so you can see it's streaming the audio to my phone over Wi-Fi. But now, the real test is what's the quality of this audio? Are there any dropouts? Uh, is it clear? Uh, it's great because it is stereo, I can pan things, which is a game changer. I've been running mono uh, in-ears over wireless for First. the past few months and I'm just really excited to be able to uh, pan things to the left or right. I also love the user interface of this app. Really simple. I've got my master faders right here. Uh, i got all the instruments here so I can select my voice um, and go ahead and you know adjust the volume. I can go in, hit edit. I can change the picture. I can change um, the pan, I can select whether it's me or the band. And that just means when I go over here all the way to the left, I can have my channels like my voice and my guitar um, and maybe the click on, on this first thing right here and then the rest of the band can be on this second fader right here. And I can hit this button right here on the master to mute the whole mix, unmute it, bring up and down the master. It's a really simple, easy to use interface. Now I'm gonna put my headphones on and we'll see how well this actually works. It works. I'm really impressed. To be honest, I I'm, I'm I was a doubter. I, I didn't believe that this could be possible. Um, and I'm still a little skeptical of this whole setup, how realistic it is. I don't think it's right for everybody, but I think it, it is right for a lot of folks. If you happen to be in a place where everybody has iPhones or, um, you know, that, that's probably the number one thing that could be a barrier is like if you if you don't have, you know, the, the bougie smartphones like the Apple makes, then you're not gonna be able to have this setup. So that was kind of like my one piece of skepticism about it, but Again, let's just talk about like how it actually works once you have all the right gear. It is crystal clear. Like it sounds a lot clearer than what I hear over my Sennheiser wireless uh, in-ear system. And that's a pretty high quality system. Uh, we tried to dial in the frequencies the way we need to. Um, so I would say it's just as good as that, if not a little bit better, probably a little bit clearer. And then I love having the ability to have a stereo mix in my ears. And you can do that because it's digitally broadcasting 16 channels to my phone, which is insane, because then in the phone, in the app, you can alter that audio however you want. The real test is gonna come when I use this for the first time on a Sunday at my church, which is hopefully gonna happen in the very near future. I'm trying to actually do that this coming Sunday. But is this setup perfect? Is it flawless? No, nothing is perfect. Sitting here in my office, when I moved around a lot, when I was dancing and playing a lot, it would drop out momentarily. I mean, like a split second, it's a little bit jarring and annoying. And I really did follow all the instructions um, from the Audio Fusion Systems website. Um, I have this super expensive Wi-Fi router, so I know that's not the issue. It is like 10 times better. I tried it with a cheaper one and it was dropping out like crazy. So the Wi-Fi router does make a difference. I feel like I've configured the settings the best possible. Um, I think there, there, there's just gonna be, you know, maybe 2% of the time, there might be those little dropouts. I, I feel like maybe once you get situated on the stage, and you know, for me, I don't move around that much, but I think, you know, the, the signal will be nice and strong and stable. It should work most of the time. I mean, I get dropouts a lot with my current wireless in-ear setup. So it's not like I'm not used to that type of thing. Uh, to me, the quality of this mix sounds a lot better, so it's worth it even if it 
doesn't work, you know, two or 3% of the time. But that's my honest feedback about it. I did have some dropouts just sitting here in my office right in front of the Wi-Fi router. And I even optimized my phone. I put in airport mode and I, you know, turn off all the iCloud backup stuff and Bluetooth. So it's really just working through uh, Wi-Fi, but I still had some of those dropout issues. And just so you guys know what those dropouts sound like, we'll play a little sample uh, from you when I screen captured my phone. This blood breaks. So again, those dropouts tended to come when I was like fiddling on my phone, moving it around a lot, um, or just walking around a lot, dancing like a, like a dummy around my office. Um, but when I'm just situated in one spot, just playing along, it was like working really well. So that's how you set up this in-ear monitor system by Audio Fusion, and those are my initial thoughts about this. I'm really excited to try it out at my church, and of course, I'm gonna document that for you so you know what it's actually like using it in a real uh, worship leading context. In a few days, I'm actually gonna be meeting up with Brandon Leafblad. He's one of the team members of Audio Fusion. I have a podcast session I recorded with him. He tells you the whole story about it, how the whole system works, so you can hear it straight from him. I'll link that below, but I'm also excited to meet with him him and have uh, him help me troubleshoot some of those signal dropout issues as well. And I'll be sure to update you with a future video. Before you go, check out worshipleaderschool.com where you're going to find all the essential training, advice, and support you need to plan and lead worship. I have courses on all things tech as well as all things pastoral in worship ministry and administration, keeping things organized. So the goal is to really equip you as a worship leader and provide you with helpful support to grow yourself and grow your ministry. Ministry. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, smash that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in worship. I bet they're going to geek out over this setup as well. I'll put some other videos about in your monitoring right over here. And don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.